Hello everyone, this is Mr. Pell, and today we're going to talk a little bit about angles. So for starters, let's talk about how we can name angles. So there's a few different conventions that we use for naming angles. Um, one way that we can name an angle is if there happens to be a number associated with it, like this. You can see this little notation here is one way to show an angle. We'll talk more about that later. Um, but that little number means angle 1. So that's sort of representing the angle that it's inside of. So you could call that angle, angle 1. And you notice the angle symbol. Try to make sure it doesn't look like a less than symbol, because it's not a less than symbol. Um, you'll see it sometimes in books written with this little arc through it. Those both really just mean the same thing. Um, so I typically just use that because it's a little quicker to write. So that's angle 1 is one way you can name it. You can also name this particular angle using three points on the angle. A point on one ray, the vertex, and the other ray. So I could call this angle B, A, C. And I could also go the other way and call it angle C, A, B. Notice that when I use the three letter notation, three letter notation, if you follow the letters in order, it will trace out the angle. So B, A, C, it just traces the angle. Okay, if I did C, A, B, same thing, angle C, A, B, that works too. If you tried to call it something else, like if you thought maybe you could call this angle A, B, C, watch what happens if you try to trace it. It's A, B, C, and you haven't traced the angle. So that does not work. You can't do that. Okay. Um, now, there's another kind of notation, another way to name an angle that you can use, but only sometimes. Um, when the, when the, you can name an angle by its vertex, in this case, angle A. So I can call this angle A, but only if the angle I'm referring to is the only angle with that vertex. So if in this figure there was another ray coming off of point A, I can't call that yellow angle angle A anymore because angle A is ambiguous. Ambiguous just means I don't know exactly what it means. Angle A could be referring to the bigger angle or two of the smaller ones. And so in that case, you would not be able to use this. Um, so the only time you can use the single letter is if it's the only vertex, if it's the vertex of the only angle in the figure. Um, so just something to be watch out for. This is handy because it's, it's quick and easy, and you can use it often, but you can't always. Sometimes you have to use the three. Okay. So in this example, um, why don't you go ahead and try to name all the angles. Pause and, and try that. Okay. So you could name angle 1, which could also have been called. Now, it's the same angle, but you could have called it angle R, J, P, or angle P, J, R. So that's, that's one of them. That's angle 1. There's a second angle in this figure that we could name, and we could call that angle 2. We could call it angle P, J, N, or we could call it angle N, J, P. Okay? There's a third angle that we can name in this figure, which is the big angle. Okay, the big angle. Now there's no number that represents that big angle because the one is inside the little one, the two is inside the other little one. So that big one we could call angle N, J, R, or angle R, J, N. So there are three different angles that you could name and any of those are, are fine. And it's totally up to you. You don't have to name it all three ways or all two ways, but just one of those would work. Notice I cannot if you're wondering what this is for, <laughs> could we just say angle J? And of course the answer is no, because J is the vertex of three different angles, and so angle J would be ambiguous. We wouldn't know what it meant. Okay, moving on. Um, special pairs of angles. So hopefully you're familiar with these. I'm going to go really quick. Supplementary angles are a pair of angles that add to 180 degrees. So a pair of angles that add up to 180 degrees. They can be next to each other or not. Um, complementary angles. Complementary angles are a pair that add to 90 degrees. So it's a pair of angles that add to 90 degrees. 
Okay. Vertical angles, the, the verbal, the written definition of vertical angles is kind of tricky, so I'm just going to show you what vertical angles are. Vertical angles are formed whenever two lines intersect. And so there are, anytime two lines intersect, there are two pairs of vertical angles. Um, so angle one and angle two are a pair of vertical angles. And then angle three and angle four are a pair of vertical angles. So two lines intersect, there's a pair of vertical angles. And something we'll study more a little moving forward, but you should know, vertical angles are always congruent to each other. So in this figure, angle one and angle two must be equal in measure, they must be congruent. Angle three and angle four must be equal in measure, they must be congruent. So in this figure, for example, I see that angle F or B, that angle is 50 degrees, and if you extend that line, and you extend that line, I can tell by looking at this figure that if that's 50 degrees, then this one here, angle AOE, must also be 50 degrees. We know that for sure. Um, you can also mark them as congruent using that notation, but we'll talk more about that later. Okay, a linear pair, um, you might get that mixed up with supplementary. They kind of mean the same thing, but not really. A linear pair is a pair of angles that actually forms a straight line, so they have to be next to each other. So, for example, those two angles physically form a straight line. You would also call them supplementary, so it is correct to say that angle 1 and 2 are supplementary, but they're a linear pair because they actually form a straight line, as opposed to, say, a 120 degree angle over here and a 60 degree angle over here. You would say these two angles are supplementary, because they're a pair that adds to 180, but they're not a linear pair because they don't physically form a straight line. So some similarities and differences between those two terms. Okay, one more thing. Um, solving a problem using angles. So in this example, it says that ray AD, so the red ray, is an angle bisector. Angle bisector. Bisector means it splits it into two equal parts, so that means these two angles are equal to each other. That means that if this angle is 2x plus 10, this one must also be 2x plus 10. So now, because we're told that angle BAC, which is angle BAC, that's this whole big angle, is 6x minus 30, we can use angle addition and say that this angle plus this angle must equal the whole thing, so that 2x plus 10 plus 2x plus 10, which is 4x plus 20, must be equal to 6x minus 30. And so that's the equation we can use to solve it. I'm going to run through that really quick, but you can do this on your own to make sure you can do it correctly. 2x equals 50, so x is 25. 25. That's all for now.